When you're high up in the air, there are no traffic lights or police. So it's very important to coordinate the movement of air traffic to make airplanes stay a safe distance apart in order to avoid mishaps. This important task is performed by the vast air traffic control system. This huge network of skilled individuals and advanced equipment ensures safe operations of airplanes in the air, both private and commercial. On the program today, how this happens and impacts on air safety is our subject of interest. This is Aviation This Week on Channels Television, and you're most welcome. I'm Victoria Ido. The airspace is the portion of the atmosphere controlled by a country above its territory, and more generally, any specific three-dimensional portion of the atmosphere. Most times, the airspace is divided into two. Controlled airspace, where air traffic control has some form of positive executive control over aircrafts flying in that airspace. Uncontrolled airspace is that in which air traffic control does not have authority, although it may act in an advisory manner. The airspace may be further subdivided into a variety of areas and zones, including those where there are either restrictions on flying activities or complete prohibition of flying activities. Managing the controlled airspace requires an air traffic control system which guarantees safety, with individuals working as traffic controllers to ensure you get to your destination safe and fast. The primary purpose of ATC Worldwide is to prevent collisions, organize and expedite the flow of air traffic, and provide information and other support for pilots. In some countries, ATC plays a security or defensive role or is operated by the military. This view is very high on the directional radio range, which aircraft picks to find its direction. It radiates 360 degrees, which aircraft picks to find its bearing to wherever the aircraft is going. It is very, very important because it, it, it shows you the bearing to and fro. When aircraft picks it, you turn to the viewer of any station you are going to. It shows going and then coming. You know exactly where you are going and where you are coming from. The pilot calls them and tells them where they are coming from. That is shown on the scope. In addition to guiding the pilots, ATCs also keep the pilots informed about changes in the weather conditions, preparing them to effectively manage rough weather where necessary. There are many teams of air traffic controllers that help guide the plane to its destinations without any mishaps. During arrival and departure, controllers effectively direct each plane. Once a plane approaches the airport, the pilot informs the terminal of the aircraft's presence. When the path is clear, the controller directs the pilot to a runway. After the plane lands safely, it's a ground controller's job to effectively direct the plane to its assigned gate. In the case of a departure, the ground controller will direct the plane to its assigned runway. This equipment has a function that has to do with DME. There's an equipment, there's an equipment inside the shelter called DME, distant measuring equipment. The glass dome is located with this equipment. The function of that DME is to give the start distance. Start distance, what I mean by distance measuring equipment, distance from where you can get the aircraft can tune with the glass globe and know its position, probably to the airport. The local controller informs the pilot about conditions in the airport. Once the plane takes off, the plane is guided by the departure controller. There are radar controllers as well. They warn pilots about bad weather, potential obstacles and other nearby planes. Beyond the air traffic controllers, there are equipment that also guide pilots to land. 
On the whole, the goal of air traffic control is to ensure that when you take to the skies at 20,000 feet or more, you return safely back to land. The reduced vertical separation minimum is employed by ATCS to keep aircraft away from one another. Let's get to hear the dynamics of these operations from our guest, who himself is an air traffic controller. The major corporate mandate of Nigeria Airspace Management Agency as an agency of government to ensure that aircraft that is operating into, through and within the Nigeria Airspace does so safely. To achieve this, we provide what we generally call air traffic services. The air traffic services is broadly grouped into what we call the air traffic control service, then the alerting service, then adversary service. The aerodrome control is provided from the office which everybody that visits an airport will see, we call it the control tower. For major airports, it is provided at the control tower. Then the other phase of the control is the one we call the terminal approach control, which occurs from the point an aircraft takes off to up to about 30 nautical miles away from the airport for departing traffic. Then for arriving traffic from about 30 nautical miles, that's the ICAO prescription, that's what we call the optimal terminal airspace, you know, uh, boundary or dimension. From 30 nautical miles flying into an airport is where we provide the terminal air traffic control service. Then beyond this very you know, distance is what we call en route or area airways control. So all these services are divided 